Hi everybody, it is January 25, 2018. I'll link below to all of the articles that I'm going to work from in this video. These articles give you, give you a very good indication that we are so deep in a police state today that anybody thinking that one guy in the White House is going to turn all of this around is um, not thinking very well. The only way to turn this around is for people to get involved in their communities. When these events take place in your community, everybody has to come out and support um, in support of whomever the police state is targeting. Because if you don't, Eventually, that police state's going to target you. City shutting down life-saving charity because they don't have a permit. Everything, everything that you want to do today, you've got to ask government permission. They have to approve and give you a permit. Otherwise, you might be engaged in a criminal act simply by helping those in need. You could be engaged in a criminal act. We know that cities have made homelessness illegal. We know that they have passed legislation in counties and cities across the country that state that it's a criminal act now to feed the homeless. This could only have happened if people allowed it to happen. I know, so many don't like hearing that, but it is the absolute truth. Um, this woman in New Jersey started a food pantry to help people in need. The feedback from the community was overwhelming. The community began coming together. The operation quickly turned from a simple food pantry into something much more. Um, what they had at the food pantry was this saying, take a blessing if you need one, leave a blessing if you can. And many left blessings for those who needed the blessings. Christmas gifts were donated during Christmas. 41 children got Christmas gifts that they otherwise would not have received. And it began to grow. It grew by people simply telling the woman what they desperately needed and then within hours they were it, it, what they desperately needed was received by others giving the operation um, included medical supplies and a woman who desperately needed a nebulizer to uh, give her child medication she reached out to Angela that was the woman who started the food pantry and within hours by Angela posting this need, the woman got the nebulizer. Angela began to offer her home as a place to stay warm during the coldest weather to those homeless. So it grew, and as it grew, well, the state said, we will have no more of this. City code enforcers showed up at her door. And frankly, I think at that point, people need to make phone calls and get that community right out in the streets getting rid of those city code enforcers. So now she is fighting this in her uh, city. The city is um, Egg Harbor. Egg Harbor, New Jersey. So she is asking for the community to come out to show up and to stand in support. California. <laughs> okay. Yeah, California is the state that has made the abject insanity that is, is happening all over our country. But California makes it very obvious and the Agenda 21, Agenda 2030 implementation 
is going at such a with such rapidity in California that it is so obvious. But everything that's happening in California is going to or has already taken place in your own state, in your own community. And that's why it's really important to watch California. But my God. All right. The Democratic majority leader has introduced a bill to stop sit-down restaurants from offering customers straws with their beverages unless they specifically request one. Believe it or not, this law will make it a criminal offense for a waiter to give a customer a straw that straw the customer did not request. Okay, if you request a straw, it's okay. If the waiter puts a straw in the drink, it's a criminal act. Are we... What, okay. Um, oh. I don't know. I don't know how to handle this kind of insanity, but people really need to be getting rid of these people. And, and don't wait to vote for your next, you know, uh, in your next election. Get rid of these people now because they are... They, they need to be locked up in a psychiatric ward. It is the, the punishment, six months in jail and a fine of up to $1,000 for these waiters who put a straw in a glass that has not been requested. They're, they're, this makes no sense, okay? <laughs> it makes no sense. But cities in California have already passed straws on request laws. They passed them last year. Seattle food service businesses won't be allowed to offer plastic straws or utensils as of July. The LA Times has endorsed this. Hey, yeah, this is a great law. Make it a criminal offense for a waiter who gives a straw to a customer, a customer who hasn't asked for one. Hey, the actual numbers of straws um, being used is unclear, and the damage that straws pose to the environment is not clear. But hell, why don't we make it a criminal offense? Ah, oh. how how do we let these government officials get away with this over and over and over again? Uh, California too is well, they're going to fine employers. But ten thousand dollars for for abiding by immigration laws, turning over information about illegal aliens. If an employer does that, the attorney general is going to take ten thousand dollars from businesses, from employers. Um, do you get here what's happening? The attorney general is not complying with immigration law, and he is making up his own laws. And he is telling employers, if you do the right thing and you actually follow immigration law and you act like a law-abiding resident of California, you will be punished. You will have to turn over $10,000. These laws that are being passed are really frightening because they are making what's good bad and what's bad good. And California now has a law that will automatically register illegal aliens to vote. Jerry Brown signed this bill last year, the New Motor Voter Act, which automatically registers people to vote when they apply for a new driver's license or a new state ID through the Department of Motor Vehicle. And, well, Democrats certainly know what they're doing. By passing this law, it gives Democrats a real big majority allowing illegal aliens to vote because illegal aliens in California can get a driver's license. So they're legal to drive except they're here in the country illegally according to our immigration law. Okay, we've got a law and we should be following it and if we don't like the law then get Congress to change the law. You, you don't just let these government officials willy-nilly, whenever they 
you know, have a whim that they just change laws. These are called dictators. They're not government officials who represent the people. They are dictators. They make up the law as they so wish. This is a very, very frightening, well, I was going to say development, but it's developed. So a very, very frightening manifestation in a country that was once a country ruled by law. Now it's ruled by uh, federal and state and local dictators. Border Patrol inspection of a Greyhound bus is raising questions about being stopped. A Border Patrol, Border Patrol agents came on to a Greyhound bus in Florida requesting to see your papers. Proof of citizenship. You can watch the video. I'll link below to everything. Um, yeah. Greyhound bus yesterday at 4.30 p.m. in Fort Lauderdale asked every passenger for their papers and to prove citizenship, and they actually kicked a grandmother and a grandchild off the bus because that grandmother did not have proof of citizenship. Now, when you are not driving yourself, you know, in your car, you don't need a license. You can get on a bus and travel without carrying any documents should you be stopped and asked for your papers. This was not the United States of America not too long ago, but it has developed because we are allowing it. So this New York professor at a college has tweeted, uh, if you're documented and don't have any warrants, the time to think about whether and how you'd refuse to comply with such request is now. And he is advocating to not comply, to not comply. New York Police Department checkpoints appear at subway entrances occasionally with cops searching bags. New Yorkers are allowing that to happen. Um, you know, I'll, I'm not going to read these articles, but Congress has quietly, it's quietly pushing this bill to require national biometric ID for all Americans. It is called the Securing America's Future Act of 2018. It establishes a mandatory national identification system that requires all Americans to carry a government-approved ID containing biometric features. Without this card, according to the legislation, you will not be able to work in this country. Real ID Act. I posted a video on the Real ID Act that states the few states that were had not complied with um, legislation passed in 2005 for every state to have a Real ID Act with a yellow star on it, which is the star the Jews wore in Nazi Germany. So South Carolina, uh, Maine, other country, uh, other states, I'm sorry, they're now complying, and yeah, the Real ID Act will allow you to fly and get into federal buildings and onto military um, bases. If you don't have a Real ID Act, it will say the driver's license that is not a Real ID Act, it will say not a federal ID. So if you have a not federal ID, and I'm not sure if that's the exact terminology, but if you have one of those, then you better have a passport because you're not going to be able to fly domestically. But this national identification will be for everyone. It's new. This is a new piece of legislation. This bill will give DACA recipients, you know, the dreamers, uh, the illegal aliens uh, who are born in this country, I believe. No, if you're born in this country, you're a citizen. Uh, anyway, DACA, yes, it has to do with the illegal immigrants 
Um, but those illegal immigrants, uh, a three-year renewable legal status while forcing a biometric national ID card on virtually everyone else. Okay, does that make any sense? Nothing makes sense anymore. Nothing makes sense anymore. You'll be forced to carry around your national ID card tied to this massive database chock full of biometric identifiers like fingerprints and retina scans. Without this ID, you won't be able to legally hold a job or likely even open a bank account or board a plane. And I don't know about you guys, but I'm really upset with what has happened here. This is a good article. Things are getting worse, not better. Roundups, checkpoints, and national ID cards. Written by John Whitehead, constitutional and civil rights attorney at the Rutherford Institute. No one gets spared the anguish, fear, and heartache of living under the shadow of an authoritarian police state. That's the message being broadcast 24-7 to the citizens and residents of the American police state with every new piece of government propaganda, every new law that criminalizes otherwise lawful activity, every new policeman on the beat, every new surveillance camera casting a watchful eye, a watchful eye, every sensationalist news story that titillates and distracts, every new prison or detention center built to house troublemakers and other undesirables, every new court ruling that gives government agents a green light to strip and steal and rape and ravage the citizenry, every school that opts to indoctrinate rather than educate, and every new justification for why Americans should comply with the government's attempts to trample the Constitution underfoot. Here in America, things are getting worse, not better. As the nation inches ever closer towards totalitarianism, that goose-stepping form of ty tyranny in which the government has all of the power and we the people have none. And he cites what happened in Florida with a custom, uh, the border agents stopping this Greyhound bus, asking for people's papers. The more we allow this to continue, the more cemented tyranny becomes. The more centered uh, or cemented the centralized power, the more power the central government has. When you centralize power, it is the main ingredient for tyranny. We're living it. We're living it. If, if all Americans began to act like they were Americans and did not comply with all of the authority figures who are clearly uh, that they're, they're they're little Nazi agents. They're the code enforcers, the law enforcers, the border agents. If we did not comply, we could turn this around. If people came out in support for all of those who are feeling, who are feeling the pinch of the tyranny, if community members came out and stood with their neighbors, then this could be turned around. You can't sit and wait for Trump. No one's going to fix it. But each and every one of us in our own communities.